Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Good Ram Show with me, Chris Goodrum. Okay, so this afternoon uh, we're continuing the theme of the last couple of weeks uh, and looking at uh, independent bottling companies and this week's uh, independent company is uh, AD Rattray as the title page has obviously given that away and um, well I suppose the question is why am I looking at AD Rattray? A um, couple of reasons I suppose. Uh, first off that uh, this year marks the 150th anniversary of the company which was founded in 1868 by a chap called the name of Andrew Dewar Rattray. Um, currently uh, I think head of the company is a chap called Tim Morrison who uh, is a uh, fourth generation descendant I believe and um, it's amazing isn't it you know it's, the whiskey industry seems to be awash with Morrisons and Mackays and you know just, it seems to me that sort of you know you, you, you speak to somebody in the whiskey industry and they've got one of their those surnames but anyway the second reason is well because they kindly sent me some samples completely out of the blue I got this nice little box with uh, these five samples in um, why is it a surprise well for a number of years now, I mean, well, I've, I mean, I've been dealing with uh, AD Rattray now for, ooh, I hate to think how long, well over a, a decade. And um, But for the last few years, it seems to me that they've kind of concentrated more on the European markets, Germany especially. And I suppose you can't blame them. I mean, as a business, you want to sell your product. And if you've got a market that will pretty much take everything you produce, then you're kind of going to, um, you know, you're not going to turn your nose up at that. Uh, and certainly not those kind of sales anyway so they've kind of not been releasing an awful lot in the UK which has been a shame because over the years they've released some absolutely cracking stuff but um, I got sent a number of samples and, and I'm going to be a little bit critical here uh, in um, uh, just before Christmas sort of late November -y kind of time uh, a load of new stuff which they decided they were going to bottle for the UK market of, of which the bulk of it was was really young spirit, you know, five, six, seven years old, finished in, in sherry casks and things like that to, to, to kind of give it some bloody character. And, and I kind of got the impression that it was that these, that, these whiskies were being bottled because they felt they needed to bottle something for the UK market rather than being absolutely ready for bottling. And I was actually quite disappointed. And, um, I mean, the whiskies weren't bad quality-wise. They were just too young. And they'd, they'd, they'd kind of done the usual kind of alchemy job on them to try and sort of get them some more character. But, you know, anyone well, I could certainly see beneath that uh, that finishing. And, um, ooh, <laughs> and lo and behold, I put it get arrives. Um, so I could see beneath the, um, the that that finishing and the, the spirit was just sort of like, you know, just just not ready and I, I was really quite disappointed like I said so when this selection of samples turned up and I was and I looked at, uh, at the ages I was thinking not not that I'm saying that you know the good whiskey has to be old you, you know that by now that uh, it, every whiskey you know has its optimum bottling time but um, it seemed to me that this was a selection of bottlings that they'd, they'd actually wanted to bottle some stuff that, that, that was actually thought about to be bottled for the UK market as opposed to just being shipped off to uh, to Germany or Scandinavia or, or wherever so um, yes it was it's it's kind of nice to see that and um, Right, I, I guess there's not a great deal much more to say apart from um, let's have a look at today's live now. Okay, so we are going to kick off with the youngest, it's just like the other week really, isn't it? You know, oh look, the youngest whiskey is 20 odd years old. Yes, and in fact it is indeed, it's 22. Uh, this is uh, a Glen Grant. It, it was distilled in July of 1995, bottled in March of this year. Uh, a single bourbon hogshead, number 119450, bottled at a strength of 53.2%. So, a nice one to kick off with, I think. Uh, the second bottle I'm going to be looking at is a grain. Uh, this is uh, a North British, it's 25 years old. It was uh, distilled in September of 1991 and bottled in June of last year. I guess they've sat on it for a while, but um, it's been aged in a recharged sherry bud. 
Mm, that always kind of gets me a little bit, the whole recharring business sometimes, like uh, like I've said previously, can bring out the sort of the bitterness of the oak and, and make the oak feel a little bit false in character. But we shall, we shall see. I'm obviously making no uh, assumptions straight off the bat. So uh, this was butt number 262058 and bottled at 53.2%. Third whiskey we'll be looking at is obviously part of a, a new range that they've, they've decided to create. Um, and uh, I, I must admit this is the first time I've seen a bottling in this this uh, this type of bottling. It's called the Vintage Cask Collection. So uh, I guess like a lot of a lot of bottlers, they're kind of now starting to try and have tiered uh, kind of releases, I suppose, for want of a better word. So this is a 32-year-old Longmorn. It was distilled in September of 1985 and bottled in March of this year. Uh, single bourbon hoggy, uh, 8897 and bottled at 51.2. And on to the penultimate bottling. This is again in the vintage cast collection. It is a Bamore, uh distilled in December of 1990 and bottled in March of this year. A single bourbon barrel, number 4165. Um, and uh, bottled at 50.6%. Now, according to the, um, the, the the letter that I received with it, this was one of their earliest, um, well, certainly won't be one of their earliest because they've had an 18 or 100 of, but no, this was one of the, the, the first, uh, or, uh, one of, or they say original cask stock purchased by Tim Morrison in uh, 1991 from obviously Morrison and Bamore, where he, I believe he used to work, well, I don't know, I mean, obviously part of the... Uh, uh, Morrison Bamore clan shall we say but anyway so like I said to you in the beginning it just seems to me that these are our casks going they're going back to how they used to do do business selecting really good interesting casks that that mean something shall we say as opposed to stuff that needs to be bottled or well, not necessarily even that to be honest with you as I've said and the uh, final bottling we'll be looking at is an Ardmore which is uh, the youngest in the uh, the lineup <laughs> yeah but it's it's the heaviest uh, in the peat so hence it's coming at the end so this was distilled in August of 1996 and bottled again in March of this year uh, it is uh, from a single bourbon hoggy, uh, 149022, and bottled at 59%. My God, that was one hell of a tight cask, that's all I can say. 59% uh, at 21 years old. <sighs> that would have probably been able to go for a, a little while longer, should we say, given that. So, anyway, that's um, today's little lineup. Let's um, kick off with a bit of, bit of Glengarrah. Right, okay, so let's have a look at uh, some Old Glen Grant. I, I must admit, I do have a, a fondness, shall we say, for Old Glen Grant. Uh, let's hope this is uh, up to scratch then, shall we? Oh, that is a lovely nose. Um, it has that sort of lovely, um, slightly tropical, mature fruit character. Apple, apricot, a little bit of lime, um, a little bit of crispy kind of, um, not yeah, quite minerally sort of space id kind of character and oh, it's just lovely balance. The oak is, is slightly sawdusty and vanilla-y, but that, that citrus note is uh, and minerality is really, really coming through and um, it just really balances absolutely everything nicely. It, it's possibly, you, you could argue it's maybe a, a, a shade... Um, Hairs on the nose, um, a shade uh, too expressive with that citrus character, but but I think it's just it just has a wonderful freshness, and I think it's just absolutely wonderfully balanced. This is a, a, a lovely cask. Let's see what the palate's like. Mm. Oh God, that finish is great. As is often the case with Glen Grant, it has a lovely multi character, and this certainly has a, a darker feel to the palette. More malt, a little bit of walnut, 
almost raisinated fruit, not a, not sherry variety, obviously. Um, some barley licorice, uh, quite a, a lovely sort of intense, crisp, citric and mineral finish, which is kind of enhanced by the uh, by the cask strength, uh, the, the alcohol. I don't think it needs any water with it. I mean, it's only 53.2%. Um, I mean, some of you, if you bought it, might want to put a little drop of water with it. And um, I don't really, I've I, I got a little bit, um, so I'll, I'll put a, a, a smidge with it, but I don't think it really needs it, but we'll just see what happens uh, with a little drop of water. Like a lot of, of old Glen Grants and um, it really brings out that sort of juicy orange fruit. It's really liquid orange. There's some tangerine now. The oak is a lot more sort of vanilla-y. Less sawdusty, a little bit more toffee, I guess. Really, really creamy. I mean, it's, you know, it, I, I think with, with this kind of whiskey, it's how do you like it? Do you like it slightly more dusty, slightly more sort of uh, tropical fruit? orientated or do you prefer sort of a bit more oak character so it depends on um, whether you want to put a little drop of water with it or not. Yeah again the, the oak is a little bit more creamy, a little bit more vanilla, -y. there's less maltiness, it's not quite so dark, it's lighter um, and the, and and the oak has certainly come forward. Uh, it's a little bit longer, less minerally, less citric on the finish. And and like I said, it it really kind of just boils down to whether whether you like a little bit more oak in your whiskey or whether whether you prefer more spirit character. At the end of the day, either way, that is a lovely bottling to start off with. Okay, so let's move on to the second bottling. This is the 25-year-old uh, North British, which in grain terms, as you well know, is, is maybe a tad on the young side. I mean, um, most grains, this is really probably the youngest that you'd want to sort of like bottle your grain whiskey at. But anyway, let's, let's see what the nose gives us. That's quite a sort of like a wood spicy, smoky nose. Um, some lovely dried fruit, that sort of crisper, sort of like more kind of sultana, kind of bloody cat hairs. Um, that's it, sort of like you know, disappear off Barbie and just leave me full of cat hairs. Um, anyway, where was I? Yeah, so really spicy, some lovely dried fruit. It's got a, a freshness, there's a touch of lemon, um, uh, it's a real crisp column still note kind of coming through. I'm not getting a huge amount of sherry. There's a bit, there's a little bit, a little bit of sort of um, dried fruit. I mean, certainly I'm not getting the um, bitterness that I would have expected from a recharged cask. Um, yes, there's a little bit there, but I mean, it's nothing sort of like getting bent out of shape about, shall we say. Um, and I'm guessing that's probably where the smoky wood spices have come from. Uh, the recharring has kind of brought them out. And um, yeah, it's... It's nicely balanced, it has to be said. I mean, um, it's, like I said, it's got that still retaining a little bit of a, you know, in inverted commas, youthful kind of character, but it's all really nicely balanced. There's some lovely peppery spice coming out now. And the thing with grain is, as, as you well know, it needs that oak interaction to give it the depth and give it some more character. And... Um, that is, that is fabulous. That's a lovely whiskey. So with palgas. Mm, that's that lovely burnt, scrubby oxidized fruit finish, a little bit more oak, uh, sherry oak, should we say, kicking off things on the palate. There's a little bit more dried fruit, spices, really, really peppery on the mid palate, really intense. Um, 
Again, there's there's some vanilla. Um, there's the, the the column still sort of dried fruits, a sort of light, a sort, sort of sultanery kind of fruit. Really grippy finish. Um, again, that sort of peppery spice just sort of like carries on going and going, and really juicy, really full. Uh, lovely integration, um, and you know. It's a lovely progression from the sort of sherry cast through into um, the character of the spirit and sort of you know ending on the uh, on on the peppery spices. So. Mm. Okay, so let's move on to the long one. I was just doing a quick calculation actually with uh, the price to see what that would sit on the shelf at and. $82.95, and uh, bloody good value, I, I would say, um, for a 25-year-old whiskey. And, and it, like I said, when uh, I think it was Bank Holiday Monday when I was looking at the extra old particular range, the grains just, just are just so good value for money at the end of the day. You know, you are getting a lot of bang for your buck, shall we say. And I think more, more people should, you know, look at the grains. They are different. Um, and some people may well not get on with them, um, just just like any whiskey, I suppose, at the end of the day. But, you know, when, when you're looking at 80-odd quid, you know, I, I, you could, you know, single malt probably, you know, of a, a, what, 17, 18 years old is probably going to set you back the same sort of price. You know, there's still really very, very good value, it has to be said. Anyway, so let's look at the long one. Now, the long one's a lot more bloody expensive, it has to be said, so... Uh, uh, I'm expecting, uh, expecting good things, shall we say. Oh, mm. oh that's a tropical fruit again, that sort of lovely maturity, although it's more kind of kumquat and, and kiwi. Um, there's hints of tea chest, um, a little bit of vanilla, some spices. Um, that oak is, is wonderfully sawdust, that's how I love my, my mature American oak, it has to be said with that sawdusty sort of slightly sort of cinnamony kind of spice note. Oh, again, fabulous balance, absolutely fabulous. I mean, again, the oak is, is, is kind of maybe playing second fiddle to, to the character of the spirit and I've got no problem with that at all, it's just absolutely gorgeous that's really becoming citric now i'm getting some juicy orange clementine oh that's deep that is incredibly good and like i said i hope so considering the uh, yeah, the the price of this uh, this particular bottling but oh god that's good let's have a look at the palette Mm. Wow, what a finish. A really juicy, really incredibly fruity, but opens up with maybe a little bit more taut tannins. They're a bit grippy, um, but they're not bitter at all. They've got that lovely dustiness, and then you get the, the juicy um, apricot, apple, clementine, tangerine kind of coming through. little hint of tropical fruit as well. Um, then we're back into a bit more spice again, sort of soft, almost kind of cinnamony kind of spice, but not quite. It's a lot more, it's a bit more softer than that, a bit sweeter. Um, lovely kind of lightly cocoa-y kind of finish, dark chocolate, malt. I just, that is just incredibly complex. It's a beautiful whiskey. And yeah, like I said, it isn't going to be particularly cheap. But oh, whiskies of that calibre certainly aren't, and that is a stunning whiskey. Right, okay, let's move on to the Bamor now. As you well know, I do like my old Bamors, and uh, let's see how this one stacks up then, shall we? Delicate, elegant, with just that sort of ephemeral kind of peat note. Um, earthy, 
oily, slightly fishy, touch of iodine, subtle menthol, barley. Oh, that's, that is absolutely stunning. It's not as violety as, as some Bamors can be, um, but oh, that is classic. I mean, I mean, it's just so mellow and um, dusty and mature. But it's still got a little bit of that sort of, you know, masculine Bamori kind of old Bamori kind of character. Just, just kind of beneath it. It's kind of like a bit like a bit like an old man, I suppose. A bit like an old boxer, you know. It's kind of still got a bit of an edge, you know. But yeah, um, it's mellowing at the uh, quite nicely. But oh, that is absolutely stunning. I mean, I love this nose. I mean, I think I got an email saying they'd sold it all, which is unfortunate. Um, but yeah, you might be able to pick this up somewhere. But oh. and it's got that classic sort of um, Bamori lemony freshness as well, which I often often find with with um, certainly with American oak aged uh, Bamors. It has to be said. And oh, this this is the sort of nose you could just sort of like spend absolutely ages with. I mean, it is really complex. Anyway, let's see what the power's like. Oh, I just composed myself. Mmm. Just a bit yoga, isn't it? It's kind of like, mmm. Oh, that is bloody amazingly good. Um, really soft, subtle, juicy, quite barley lead to start off with. There's a little bit of fish oils, a smidgen of dusty peat. Um, kind of picks up as it kind of goes along. I get a little bit of tar, a little bit of iodine, um, sort of licorice. Lovely salty finish, really not hugely salty, but it's got enough salt there. Um, along with the with the alcohol um, and the brine, it kind of really freshens on on the finish. Um, there's a little bit of palm of violet, not a great deal. Again, it's not one of those sort of like violety old bamors. It's still got a lovely freshness, and, and and that finish is just absolutely incredible. I mean, yeah, um, it just goes to show that. I mean, I'm not saying that bamor makes bad whiskey now. But as, as I said last time, um, it's all very, very kind of safe and it's just sort of, or the distillery releases of Bamor tend to be, it's just, you know, the, the independents just seem to sort of be bottling some absolutely stunning stuff. And um, oh, it's just so long and I can still taste it now and it's got that lovely sort of, you know, um, almost kind of rock pooly kind of saltiness at the, on the finish and... Um, Yeah. Right, okay. We <laughs> seem to have got to the end fairly quickly, although probably no, no quicker than normal. Anyway, let's uh, let's have a look at the art more then, shall we? Oh, that is intense. That's really peaty, dusty peat. It's a it's a herbally kind of spirit note there as well. It's a really not I mean yes, there's a rawness to it. Um but it's not kind of like um, an uncontrolled rawness. Um, it all kind of like w nicely works in. There's some barley, like I said, really quite herbal. It's quite citric as well. I'm getting lime, green gauge, mm, sort of almost kind of like gooseberry, not quite gooseberry, but you know, in that sort of green citrus kind of. Um, uh, character. Pete is getting slightly manure. I'm not getting a huge amount of oak. It's all very, very much spirit orientated. Oh, I mean, that is intense. That really is intense. It's almost that citric note is 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 kind of like almost implying a slight saltiness, but it's not. Not really salty, if you see what I mean. And um, 
oh, it's just absolutely fantastic. It's really mellow but intense, um, barley but peaty. Oh, that's good. I like that. That's that's a, that's an intense. Hmm. That's a great nose. Absolutely wonderful. Let's see what uh, what the palate is like. Quite chewy finish, quite malty, although quite masked as well. Well, relatively masked, I should say. Um, lovely, juicy, mouth-watering finish, but that's obviously being helped by the uh, the high ABV. Um, more barley-centric on the palate. The peat is a little bit lessened, uh, but still slightly manure slightly spicy. Um, some lovely citric notes again that sort of green gauge lime kind of note kind of comes through um, quite full really intense mm, I think that needs a little drop of water so we're going to, going to going to put a little drop with it and just sort of see what happens um, but I love that intensity on the finish I mean um, yes okay you are sacrificing a bit of length because of the alcohol but mm, you know, you, you you want a kick in the pants at the end of the day on the uh, on your finish, as far as I'm concerned. And if that does mean that the finish is a little bit lessened, then well, so be it. It's kind of swings and roundabouts, isn't it? So that's got really dusty now. It's really brought out the oak. The the, the peat has become quite dusty as well. It's got a sort of coal smoky kind of um, character to it. There's more citrus. More barley as well. It's possibly you could argue that maybe the balance is a little bit better um, with. Uh, God, that is that is really smoky now and dusty. That is a lovely nose. I mean, he, he you know, again, it's like the thing I love about car strength whiskies is you know, they they can be either yeah you know, they can be equally as good whether you put a little drop of water with them or you don't. Um, and uh, sometimes it's just great fun to experiment with with you know smaller or larger amounts of water whatever whatever you know takes your fancy so to speak but oh that's getting slightly violety now as well there's a sort of slight violet tinge to the peat Let's see what the palate's like Again, quite dusty. It's a little bit more vegetal with with uh, a drop of water, as we said. Still quite barley. The peat is kind of not as intense, but that kind of seems to be the way when you put a little drop of water with 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 peated malts. Um, certainly doesn't feel twenty one, as we said. I'm not getting a huge amount of that sort of what I would expect classic mature sort of fruit kind of character, baked fruit, yada yada yada, that kind of stuff. Um, so it's still got a lovely kind of citric, fresh, intense kind of character. Um, it's a little bit longer now. I mean, I think personally, I prefer that with without the uh, the, the, the water. Um, but either way, oh, that is a fantastic whiskey, isn't it, monster? Mm. Right, okay, so let's sum today's episode of the show up. Well, I don't think I can criticise AD Rattray for this uh, this range of bottlings. It has to be said, like I said, I think they've actually, you know, made a, a conscious decision to, to, to bottle some interesting stuff, some stuff that's ready for bottling as opposed to sort of like, you know, we need to bottle some stuff for the UK market. Um, and, you know, it's probably not me that's the only one that's, bemoaned the sort of the, the lack of uh, AD Rattray on the shelves because you know like I said they're like every other independent bottling they've bottled some absolutely stunning malts and today's episode of the show has proven that that is indeed the case they've bottled some stinkers <laughs> over the years um, but you know I, I, I've, we, we, we've, we've worked in tandem it has to be said I mean you know um, some of you might remember the, the the rum episode of the show that I did um, 
probably a couple of months ago now when with the uh, the, the car strength bottling uh, of Caroni Trinidad they did for us and you know I, I mean I wouldn't like to say I had a a special relationship with with AD Rattray, but certainly you know we had a relationship, you know. Um, and I must admit, the sort of like the, the passing of of that did well, probably yeah, too many euphemisms. Anyway, let's let's talk about the whiskies anyway. Um, so the Glen Grant, I mean, yeah, that was absolutely spot on. Lovely old Glen Grant, you know, lovely minerality, lovely sort of citric notes, but sort of like a little bit of tropical fruit, dusty oak, you know, just absolutely classic old Speyside whiskey as far as I'm concerned. Um, the North British, yeah, okay, so I had reservations about the whole recharring sherry cask business, but certainly hasn't done that that whiskey any harm whatsoever. Lovely balance between the dried fruit of the uh, of the cask and the spirit, and yeah, just an all round bloody marvelous value for money whiskey in my my personal opinion. Um, the the long morn, well, what can you say? I mean, you don't see a huge amount of it. It has to be said. It's just kind of one of these whiskies that kind of just floats under the radar, shall we say, and pops up in the independence from time to time, and it ages majestically. This is just an absolutely gorgeous whisky. Um, well, well worth the price tag, and the price tag is well. Um, Oh, how much does it cost? Oh, yes, quite a bit, um, but not as much as you might think, shall we say. And the Bamor, well, yes, you, you would expect, um, you know, a member of the Morrison and Bamor clan to uh, to be able to uh, purchase some damn good casks of Bamor, and I'll give them their dues. A.D. Rattray have bought some lovely Bamors over the past, I think I might even have one or two in my collection, it has to be said. Um, this is absolutely stunning, Bamor. Absolutely stunning. I mean, just 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 ticks all the boxes as far as classic old Bamor goes. So, if you can get hold of a bottle, and um, I'm just having a quick look at what the price of that was, and um, well, yeah, okay. So again, you know, expensive, but you know, it's three hundred and something odd quid. I would guess, as off the top of my head. Um, and the Ardmore, yes, well, entertaining. I think is the um, <laughs> what I would say about about that particular bottling of uh, Ardmore. And Ardmore often does seem to be quite entertaining. And again, it's a whiskey that sort of you know a lot of whiskey drinkers just don't tend to think about. I mean, mainly because a lot of it goes into into the blends. I think a lot of it goes into teachers. I think off the top of my head. Um, but you know, it's a great peated Highland malt, and, and you know, uh, and that certainly was was quite impressive. So. So there you go. That's this week's episode of the show in the bag. I don't know what I'm going to be doing next week, but I've got half a dozen uh, um, episodes of the show kind of lined up, which always seems to be the case, and with more samples coming in every day or every week or you know, pretty much every day, as we said. There's, I keep thinking, yeah, yeah, I've really got to do an episode of the show on that, and then suddenly a month has gone by, you know. And uh, um, But anyway. That's that's by the by. So um, not an awful lot of whiskey left in any of these particular glasses. So uh, all that's left to say is I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of the show. Um, thank you uh, again for your comments, likes, and all that kind of stuff. So um, good dramming and good afternoon. <laughs>